Great, we're gonna keep this webinar short and sweet, but a lot of good information here. We're gonna dive right into one of my favorite segments here is Rick's Corner, where Rick can provide simple solutions for common questions. And this is actually uh, a common question that I see in support tickets, I've seen in the Facebook group, and I've even heard in webinars and phone calls. Um, so Rick, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what is the difference between member articles versus blog articles um, as far as the different post types uh, for the directory websites? Sure thing, Jason. I'm actually happy to show you what the main difference is between the two types of post types. Um, the, uh, the idea behind the member articles and the idea behind the blog articles, we're definitely going to cover both. Um, I'll be happy to share my screen as well, just to walk you guys through the different options that you have available here. Perfect. So let's take a step back and maybe explain to us what we're even talking about. Like, If you can show us what, what you're referencing in the admin on, and on the front end of a site uh, as to what these types of articles are. Let me sh pass over yes. the screen to you. Okay, perfect. So this is the correct screen. All right, so back to the topic on hand, the uh, the idea is that Brilliant Directories offers two options for you to create articles, the member articles and the blog articles. Now, the member articles, as the name is very explicit and it explains by itself, the idea is that the user of the website is the one that creates those articles. And the blog articles are intended for your community, meaning the admin of the website is able to publish content through those blog articles. Let me start off by navigating to the product section of the back end. Here is where we're going to be able to identify the membership levels and the post types that those membership levels have. So by default, all Brilliant Directories websites come with three different types of members or membership levels or products. Uh, one of them being the admin blog contributor. This is a default membership level. Um, and well, the other two are the general user and then usually like a premium or feature type of membership level is also included by default. Now let's go ahead and focus on the admin blog contributor for now. So what we're gonna do here, what we have to do here is to ensure that this membership level has the correct, the correct uh, post type activated so they can go ahead and complete those type of posts. In this uh, particular scenario, this is called the design blog. Um, in, in any other case, it would be referenced to as, um, as the just the general blog, uh, website blog, or admin blog. So when we, when we are assured that this post type is active, let me go ahead and open this up here on a different tab. I'm just going to navigate to the members inside this particular website, and I'm going to log in as one of those members. So we can go ahead and, and view this in a more much more easier way. So let's go ahead and open up the login as the member. All right. Now, when we log in as this member, here what we have are the design blocks. Very straightforward. We have that here to the left. So here we have the design blocks. Let me go ahead and open that up. I'm going to add a design blog. So once again, um, this particular website, uh, this post type is called design blog, but it could be called um, anything else that it's more related towards your own industry, towards your own community. Now, when when you have uh, when you have created this membership level and you have indeed assigned an admin of your website to be able to publish this type of content, this is what they're going to have available. Now you have the publish, of course, this is super straightforward. And it's and it's also important to note that this is the same for both the member articles and the website blog up, all, up until this point. So let me scroll down. And here, this is the main difference between the two different types of posts. So you have the custom SEO da data, and that's the meta title, the meta description, and the meta keywords. This is information that search engines are going to pick up on and they're gonna index each individual post that you complete through this uh, through this feature, through this post type, um, according to what you set up as the meta title, as the meta description, and as the meta keywords. So besides that, the rest of, of the form is the same in both of those content, of those both of those post types. 
um, but but basically gives you as the admin of the website more control over each post, right? Because you're able to so, edit this information. So Rick, so this so what you're showing us is only the admins of the site would publish blog articles, is what you're saying, and then. The other one, the member articles are, are more like community articles that all member, the, the other members of your site would contribute articles to? That users of the website will contribute uh, content to, correct. So and, they're, one, and, the, and they're shown separately on the website? They're not mixed? Correct. They're actually separate. We, we're going to get to that in just one second. Um, I, I wanted to point out the fact that the uh, the idea behind the blog, the one that we are on here right now, the admin blog, is like the holy place for your for your website, right? You as a directory owner want to ensure that you're publishing useful content for your community, um, useful content for your community. And this is basically a place where you're going to go ahead and add that content and those articles right through the blog. So as Jason just put it, um, they, they do come up in the front end in two different sections. So you have the slash blog, which is going to display the admin blogs. So let me go ahead and jump there real quick here. So I'm just gonna go to slash blog. And here in this search results page, this was wait for a second for it to load. This is where you're going to uh, have all the blog posts that are completed by the admin. So slash blog basically just reference, references the, uh, the blog articles that are published by the admin. Um, on the other hand, then the other option or the other feature that we have uh, is the slash articles. So the slash articles is basically the section in which all the content or articles that get published by the user of the website show up. So let's go ahead and take a peek here. Um, it, we, we did go over the admin blog contributors. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the premium trusted listing because I know that this, um, this particular product does have that feature active. So let me go ahead and open those members up here real quick. And I'm gonna show you what the difference is between those articles and the blog articles that we just saw. So let's go ahead and just log in as one of these, if anyone will work. So let's go ahead and log in as Stacy Hartwell. Um, when we're logged in, then here, instead of having the, 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 uh, the blog articles that we saw before, we have the member articles. In this particular scenario, again, uh, since these are features that you can activate or deactivate all across the, the products that you offer, this particular member had the design blog articles as well, but that's not usually the case. Um, what we're going to focus on right now are the member articles. I'm going to go ahead and add a member article here real quick just to show you the main difference between this form and the other one that we saw. So as you can see here, this is actually very straightforward, very similar to what we saw before, but if we scroll down, we don't have the additional custom SEO information that we had. Um, and it's also very important to note that the, um, that the content that gets published through those member articles is going to show up on the slash articles page of all the brilliant directories websites. So this is going to be the search results page that's going to display all the articles that are published by the user of your website. Right, and those articles might be a little more um, self-promoting of the member services or some industry knowledge that they might have. And you definitely want to keep those separate from what your company's website blog is trying to present to the world um, and that type of information. So this is a way to keep them separated. Very nice. That is completely correct. Uh, the idea, but it's also very important to note that these articles that are published on this section by your members are also very useful for you as a directory owner. Right, so as a community website owner, it's very important for your users to contribute this type of content. You can then repurpose that content by sharing it somewhere else, sharing it on, on social media and use it in different campaigns. So it's very important for you as, a, as the website owner to constantly keep this going, keep people motivated to contribute this type of content to your website so then you can use that later on down the road. 